Hey everyone, Brian Matias here. Now, I got back from a 16 day trip to Cuba late last week, and I'm putting this video together because of a lesson that I learned through an unfortunate situation. When I travel, especially when I'm traveling on, say, a multi day or a multi week international trip, backups of my photos are super critical, and I think everyone can under understand and relate to that. Now, I typically have three copies of my photos. The first, obviously, is always on my camera. I use, this is the Sony a7R II, and this is what I use 99% of the time on my trip. And so, every time I took an exposure, the photo was saved to the SD card. I never, ever clear my SD cards until I get home and run both an on-site and an off-site backup. So that's copy one. Then, every night when I would get back to my CASA, um, I would copy the photos over to my MacBook. So I just got this laptop shortly before my trip uh, to Cuba and I cannot say enough good things about it. This is the 2015 MacBook. It's like two pounds. It's ridiculously thin and light. And I was very concerned because I wasn't sure whether I could even run Lightroom uh, and Photoshop this is a 1.2 gigahertz version with eight gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD drive. So in terms of space, I had more than enough uh, needed for the entire trip. And what I would do is I would connect, I got this little guy right here, see if you could focus on it. Uh, no, it doesn't want to focus, bummer. Anyway, I got this thing, it's called the Juiced System Hub and it's a USB-C port that connects to the computer because it's the only port on there and it allows me to connect my SD card so this is how I primarily copied the photos over to the computer uh, and it has two USB uh, 3 ports as well as a micro SD card slot so that's backup number two now backup number three happens um, it would go to my G technology ATC case or all-terrain case which had a one terabyte brand new SSD drive in it. Nice big fat SSD drive. And you may be wondering why I'm not showing it to you. Uh, herein is the lesson. So my own personal workflow when I travel is I like to have, especially when I'm coming home, I like to have my two copies, so the camera and the computer, on me, so in my bag. And in this case it was an f-stop uh, Ajna bag. And then the third copy, the backup, I keep in my checked luggage. So I traveled with one of those North Face, uh, I think it was a large duffel bag. You know, they're bomb proof, they're like, they're crazy. You can just throw them around and they're perfect. When I got home though, I noticed that my drive was uh, not in the bag. And I'm sure I put it in there. I checked the hotel that I stayed at. Um, I checked the US airport at Miami, I, Cuba, there's just, I, if, it, if it's in Cuba, it's gone. So these are the replacements. My partners at G Technology very graciously uh, returned a new copy to me, which is huge. So I just want to show you again, this is what I was using. This is the new one terabyte SSD drive. Um, and it comes, you can kind of see behind it, the, uh, this kind of blue shock case uh, that you can wrap it around. But, that's great, but to me, this is this is like one of my most important accessories when I travel, and that is the all-terrain case or the ATC case. And I use this um, basically. I put I, it. You slide one of these drives in, and it provides extra protection, waterproof, dustproof, shockproof. It's just something that gives me peace of mind when I'm traveling. So, here's the thing: the drive is gone. Uh, on it were every single photo I took. Um, in Cuba because I did my final backup the night before we left and I also had because it's such a big hard drive or a big SSD drive rather I had all of my photos from 2015 on there as well as a Lightroom catalog that I created specifically for the trip. Anyone with a computer um, and this was a USB 3 version of the ATC case so anyone with a computer and a USB uh, port on their computer can access those photos. When I got home I thought about it and the lesson that I learned was uh, I really should have encrypted my drives. And that's something that I did the next day when I got home was I started encrypting every single drive. So any single piece of computer technology, including my computer, now is encrypted. So let's take a look. I'm going to jump on my Mac over here and I'll show you how you can encrypt your drive 
uh, as well and as well as your computer if you want to because they're two slightly different processes uh, and then I'll show you some screenshots on how to do that with Windows because I don't have a Windows machine but Windows does have encryption uh, programs built right into the operating system which is nice as does Mac so let's jump ahead and uh, take a look alright so let's take a look at how we can encrypt our drives especially our travel drives you know the drives that you pack with you when you go somewhere um, before I show you how to do so, and obviously we're on a Mac here, I want to show you the benefits of encrypting your drive. So the first thing I'm going to do is this drive here, it's a half a terabyte SSD drive uh, that I already encrypted. What I'm going to do is right click on it and eject it. So the volume gets ejected. I'm going to pop it out of my little G doc and then reinsert it and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so here you go. This is the benefit of encrypting your drive. If this drive wasn't encrypted, and I connected it to a computer, it would mount the volume without any issue and you have full access to the files. But because the volume is encrypted, it's gonna require me to enter a password, which I'll do right now. See what happens if you enter a wrong password? You can't get access to the file. Now I'll enter the right password. And now the volume is mounted. Okay, so now you understand the benefits of encrypting the drive. Let's take a look at how we can do so. We've already established that this volume is encrypted. This is the one terabyte drive that I showed you just before in the video, and it's fresh, it's brand new, I just formatted it, so it's unencrypted. To encrypt it on a Mac, and this is a Mac running 10.11.3 El Capitan, just right click on it, it's that simple, and then go to encrypt, and then the volume name. So I'm gonna click this now, just to illustrate something. The first thing you're going to do is enter a password. So this is something that you typically don't want to be your, you know, your login password that you use for your computers. You want it to be something different. So I'm going to type a password in here. And that little key right there is um, if you want Mac to generate a password for you. Uh, you don't have to use it though. And then the hint is also required. So I can say, uh, I don't know, some password hint. I'm sure I'm gonna appreciate this when I actually need to remember my, my password. Uh, when you're done, you'll hit encrypt disk. The volume will go away for a second and then it'll come back. Um, it's right over here. And if you right click on it, you'll see that uh, the encrypting line is grayed out, which means you really can't do anything here. It's advised that you don't touch the volume, uh, let it go. And just from my experience, uh, it took multiple hours. So it's the type of thing where you probably wanna do at night in the morning, it should uh, be ready to go. With an encrypted volume, you can also decrypt it if you want to get rid of it. Uh, to do so, right click and you'll now have an option called decrypt. This is also kind of your only indicator to know that the encryption has been completed. Uh, again, it's just going to be grayed out over here. And when you right click on a volume and you see decrypt, that indicates that the drive is now encrypted. And if you wish, you can decrypt it, which I don't want to do. So that takes care of encrypting and decrypting volumes, but what about the computer itself? On a Mac, if you go to the system preferences over here, and then, here, I'll close this out, and then go to security and privacy on the top row, there's a tab called File Vault. Now, File Vault is uh, Mac's or Apple's uh, kind of encryption system for the computer. And like the hard drives, it'll require a password. Also, if you forget that password, you truly, truly forget the password in the recovery key um, that's generated, you are done. You're, the data on the drives or your computer are toast and you might as well just do a hard wipe or a hard format of the computer. So on the Mac, all you need to do is click here to authenticate with your admin role. And then you can select turn on file vault. From here, you can choose whether you wanna use your Apple ID password or your iCloud password to unlock the computer or you can use a recovery key. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and do this right now because uh, I don't typically encrypt my home computer. The odds of it going missing are very small, so I'm not too worried. My laptops, however, are encrypted. And like the hard drives uh, that you encrypt, this will take some time. So do it uh, or start it when you're going to go to bed and just leave it alone. You don't typically want to reboot the computer or do anything to it while it's encrypting. Uh, encrypting the computer, in my experience, does take a very long time. So I'm going to cancel out of this and close out uh, system preferences. Now for Windows, uh, regrettably, I don't have 
a Windows machine. However, I do have a web browser and the entire internet. So I have two tabs open. The first one shows you how to use their system called BitLocker for Windows 8.1. All I did was do a Google search for BitLocker on Windows, and then I saw a Microsoft link, which I assumed would give me the best information, and it does. For Windows 8.1, which is in this tab, just click on the Turn On BitLocker, and it'll show you how to turn it on. And this will encrypt your volumes. And then I also have um, much easier for Windows 10, uh, how to turn on encryption also using BitLocker. It seems like they streamlined that process really nicely. And based on what it says here, where only someone with the right encryption key, like a password, can decrypt or unscramble it, uh, it sounds like this process is very similar to the one here on the Mac OS. It's something I strongly recommend, uh, considering uh, just for the protection and the peace of mind, knowing that in the event that your computer your laptop or your hard drive, your travel drive gets stolen or lost uh, in your travels, fine, you can write off the hardware. At least you have peace of mind knowing that the data itself is inaccessible. And really, that's good enough for me. See, that wasn't so hard, right? Um, it takes a bit of time, which is fine. Once you do it, it's done. Uh, and had I done it before I left, whoever would be having my drive right now wouldn't get much use out of it. At the very least, they wouldn't be able to get access to the data on there. So be sure to take your time and protect your belongings, especially if you're heading overseas. Uh, it's just this kind of common sense stuff that would have benefited me, and I just hope it benefits you now too. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.